The elementary charge, usually denoted as E or sometimes Q, is the electric charge carried by a single proton, or equivalently, the negation of the electric charge carried by a single electron. This elementary charge is a fundamental physical constant. To avoid confusion over its sign, E is sometimes called the elementary positive charge. This charge has a measured value of approximately 698116021766207999 times 10 minus 19 kilons. In the CGS system, E is 6990480324040500004.8032045 times 10 minus 10 stat coulombs. The magnitude of the elementary charge was first measured in Robert A. Millikan's noted oil drop experiment in 1909 as a unit. In some natural unit systems, such as the system of atomic units, E functions as the unit of electric charge, that is E is equal to 1 E in those unit systems. The use of elementary charge as a unit was promoted by George Johnston Stoney in 1874 for the first system of natural units, called Stoney units. Later, he proposed the name electron for this unit. At the time, the particle we now call the electron was not yet discovered and the difference between the particle electron and the unit of charge electron was still blurred. Later, the name electron was assigned to the particle and the unit of charge E lost its name. However, the unit of energy electron volt reminds us that the elementary charge was once called electron. The maximum capacity of each pixel in a charge-coupled device image sensor, known as the well depth, is typically given in units of electrons, commonly around 105 e per pixel. Quantization Charge quantization is the principle that the charge of any object is an integer, multiple of the elementary charge. Thus, an object's charge can be exactly 0e, or exactly 1e, minus 1e, 2e, etc., but not, say, 1 half e, or minus 3.8e, etc. This is the reason for the terminology, elementary charge. It is meant to imply that it is an indivisible unit of charge. Charge is less than an elementary charge. There are two known sorts of exceptions to the indivisibility of the elementary charge. Quarks and quasi-particles. Quarks, first posited in the 1960s, have quantized charge, but the charge is quantized into multiples of one-third e. However, quarks cannot be seen as isolated particles, they exist only in groupings, and stable groupings of quarks will have charges that are integer multiples of e. For this reason, either 1 e or 1 third e can be justifiably considered to be the quantum of charge, depending on the context. Quasi-particles are not particles as such, but rather an emergent entity in a complex material system that behaves like a particle. In 1982 Robert Laughlin explained the fractional quantum Hall effect by postulating the existence of fractionally charged quasi-particles. This theory is now widely accepted, but this is not considered to be a violation of the principle of charge quantization. Since quasi-particles are not elementary particles, what is the quantum of charge? All known elementary particles, including quarks, have charges that are integer multiples of one-third e. Therefore, one can say that the quantum of charge is one-third e. In this case, one says that the elementary charge is three times as large as the quantum of charge. On the other hand, all isolatable particles have charges that are integer multiples of e. Therefore, one can say that the quantum of charge is e, with the proviso that quarks are not to be included. In this case, elementary charge would be synonymous with the quantum of charge. In fact, both terminologies are used. For this reason, phrases like the quantum of charge or the indivisible unit of charge can be ambiguous unless further specification is given. On the other hand, the term elementary charge is unambiguous. It universally refers to a quantity of charge equal to that of a proton.
experimental measurements of the elementary charge, in terms of the Avogadro constant and Faraday constant if the Avogadro constant Na and the Faraday constant F are independently known. Nevertheless, it is a legitimate and still quite accurate method, and experimental methodologies are described below. The value of the Avogadro constant Na was first approximated by Johann Joseph Loschmidt who, in 1865, estimated the average diameter of the molecules in air by a method that is equivalent to calculating the number of particles in a given volume of gas. Today the value of Na can be measured at very high accuracy by taking an extremely pure crystal, measuring how far apart the atoms are space using X-ray diffraction or another method, and accurately measuring the density of the crystal. From this information, one can deduce the mass of a single atom, and since the molar mass is known, the number of atoms in a mole can be calculated. Na equals m per meter. The value of F can be measured directly using Faraday's laws of electrolysis. Faraday's laws of electrolysis are quantitative relationships based on the electrochemical research as published by Michael Faraday in 1834. In an electrolysis experiment, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the electrons passing through the anode to cathode wire and the ions that plate onto or off of the anode, or cathode, measuring the mass change of the anode or cathode, and the total charge passing through the wire, and also taking into account the molar mass of the ions, one can deduce F. The limit to the precision of the method is the measurement of F. The best experimental value has a relative uncertainty of 1.6 ppm, about 30 times higher than other modern methods of measuring or calculating the elementary charge. Oil drop experiment A famous method for measuring is Millikan's oil drop experiment. A small drop of oil in an electric field would move at a rate that balanced the forces of gravity, viscosity, and electric force. The forces due to gravity and viscosity could be calculated based on the size and velocity of the oil drop, so electric force could be deduced. Since electric force, in turn, is the product of the electric charge and the known electric field, the electric charge of the oil drop could be accurately computed. By measuring the charges of many different oil drops, it can be seen that the charges are all integer multiples of a single small charge, namely E. The necessity of measuring the size of the oil droplets can be eliminated by using tiny plastic spheres of a uniform size. The force due to viscosity can be eliminated by adjusting the strength of the electric field so that the sphere hovers motionless. Shot noise Any electric current will be associated with noise from a variety of sources, one of which is shot noise. Shot noise exists because a current is not a smooth continual flow, instead, a current is made up of discrete electrons that pass by one at a time. By carefully analyzing the noise of a current, the charge of an electron can be calculated. This method, first proposed by Walter H. Schottky, can give only a value of E accurate to a few percent. However, it was used in the first direct observation of Laughlin quasi-particles, implicated in the fractional quantum Hall effect. From the Josephson and von Klitzing constants another accurate method for measuring the elementary charge is by inferring it from measurements of two effects in quantum mechanics. The Josephson effect, voltage oscillations that arise in certain superconducting structures, and the quantum Hall effect, a quantum effect of electrons at low temperatures, strong magnetic fields, and confinement into two dimensions. The Josephson constant is, it can be measured directly using the Josephson effect. The von Klitzing constant is it can be measured directly using the quantum Hall effect. From these two constants, the elementary charge can be deduced. CODATA method In the most recent CODATA adjustments, the elementary charge is not an independently defined quantity. Instead, a value is derived from the relation where H is the Planck constant, alpha is the fine structure constant, mu0 is the magnetic constant, epsilon0 is the electric constant and C is the speed of light. 
The uncertainty in the value of E is currently determined entirely by the uncertainty in the Planck constant. The most precise values of the Planck constant come from what balance experiments, which are currently used to measure the product K2JRK. The most precise values of the fine structure constant come from comparisons of the measured and calculated value of the gyromagnetic ratio of the electron.